Today I'm going to talk to you about an idea that is rapidly gaining in popularity amongst conservationists and ecologists, known both as rewilding and continental scale conservation. These ideas are so exciting because they combine many conservationist concerns, endangered species, climate change, wilderness protection, and much more into one overarching positive vision. And instead of merely defending the meager bits of wild nature left, it hopes to re recreate some of it by removing human influence from priority areas. The presentation will be in two parts. First, I'm going to explain three major reasons why, re why rewilding is so desperately needed. Uh, there are many more, but the three I cover are arguably some of the worst ecological problems today. Then I'll move on to explaining, in a very basic way, the principles behind rewilding. There's also much more to say here, so if you want to know more, I'll mention some resources near the end of my presentation. The first big element of the ecological crisis is oft-talked-about and well-known uh, climate change. Like most environmental problems, and especially the big three covered here, climate change got a lot worse around the time of the Industrial Revolution, and it's still pretty closely linked to economic growth. The only times emissions worldwide have decreased since the Industrial Revolution are during times of economic decline or collapse, such as the Great Depression or the fall of the Soviet Union. Right now, there is another notable decrease in carbon emissions occurring in uh, Arab and African nations because of the turmoil jihadists are causing. Uh, this is, of course, a bad sign, since it indicates that climate change may only be stopped through a kind of economic downgrading that many people would not be happy with. One aspect of climate change that people often don't hear about is how badly it is affecting the oceans. Right now, sea life is rapidly going extinct because of ocean acidification caused by carbon emissions. It is, in fact, one of the major causes of the extinction crisis, which we'll cover next. Once again, uh, you can see that the Industrial Revolution has had a major ecological effect. Uh, some scientists predict that it has increased the extinction rate between 1,000 to 10,000 times the background extinction rate, or the normal rate of extinction in nature. That's huge. So huge that scientists have recently started making a now accepted case that we are going through a sixth mass extinction. The previous five occurred because of asteroids and supervolcanoes and other things like this, uh, but this one, of course, is caused by human civilization. As you may sense, there are some ethical questions waiting to be addressed there. Unfortunately, the extinction crisis is not talked about nearly as much as climate change because some species can disappear with little observable effect on their ecosystem, meaning it doesn't affect humans. But if we take an ethical view of the situation, the extinction crisis is far more profound than climate change, and in the long run it could put humans in a dire situation as well. You'll note that Colbert's quote uh, mentions amphibians as particularly affected by the extinction crisis. The graph on the right doesn't seem to portray this, but proportionally it's true. Uh, this is largely due to climate change, the roads that contribute to it, and the ocean acidification it causes. Amphibians are sensitive and fragile creatures, and if something isn't done, we risk, ripe, we risk wiping many of them out. The third major element of the ecological crisis is by far the worst. Roads are at the root of, the, of a wide range of ecological problems and major contributors to everyone except overpopulation. Just to name a few contributions they make, consider roads require fossil fuels to build and produce. Cars use fossil fuels and require fossil fuels to build and produce as well. Cars require mining. Icing roads disrupts pH levels and other aspects of the surrounding environment. Uh, the uh, fauna near roads are often infested heavily with weeds. Noise from roads disrupt mating patterns for birds and amphibians especially, and uh, drives many of them to extinction, actually. And roads are the, the major cause of habitat fragmentation, which is suspected to be the number one cause of species extinction. Uh, so it's no wonder that ecologists are so afraid of them. This graph, is, this graph is pulled from a study called a Global Strategy for Road Building by Dr. Lawrence, whose quote you read in the slide before. As you can see, human civilization has utterly dominated the globe, uh, and it's not without foundation to say that roads are the number one driver of the ecological crisis. Indeed, most ecologists and conservation biologists agree that road building does not need to just stop today. It needs to have been stopped yesterday. Fortunately, there is a way out. Rewilding, because it doesn't just seek to defend nature that is left, but also to enable restored wild places, directly combats roads and thereby mitigates all three ecological problems we just covered. Rewilding is driven by three core principles known as the three C's. They are carnivores, connectivity, and cores. 
The visuals on the right will give you a feel for what exactly those words mean. Cores, or core protected areas, include a spectrum of wildlands from those owned by private property owners, those managed by the BLM, or full-on wilderness areas. The science of rewilding demonstrates that bigger cores are always better than smaller ones. Connectivity is the idea that the two cores are better when they are connected. Uh, this allows them to, inter to interact in ways that most life within them are evolved to do, and it allows large predators who stabilize the food train uh, to have a terrain suitable for hunting, grazing, and living healthy wild lives. Which brings us to the third and final principle, carnivores. Uh, carnivores are so important not just because they stabilize the food chain, but because they often have far-reaching, what is known as cascading effects on their ecosystem. When this is the case, they are referred to as keystone species, some of, the more famous, some of the more famous examples being wolves, bears, and jaguars. One illustrative story about the importance of carnivores comes from the reintroduction of wolves into Yellowstone National Park. Years ago, they were driven into extinction by humans who thought they served no purpose other than eating livestock, but as a result, animals overgrazed in a way that had damaging effects on the whole ecosystem. Wolves were reintrodu reintroduced as a way to solve this problem, but they did so much more, bringing back beavers, increasing the population of many herding animal species, and even changing the landscape in some positive ways. Finally, a core contribution of the Wildlands Network, the primary organization pushing continental scale conservation, is the idea of wildways, or enormous connections between ecosystems that span the entire continent. These wildways have many positive effects, like letting animals migrate, as they will need to do as the climate changes because of human civilization. And uh, they also provide a habitat for large carnivores, whose importance was just stressed. Um, right now, several organizations are working on sections of the wildways. Yellowstone to Yukon is working on the Pacific, which is in the far west. Uh, some Canadian conservationists are connecting land in the Arctic Boreal up in the north. And the Wildlands Network is working with uh, hunters, property owners, government agencies, indigenous people, lots of uh, allies that conservationists previously hadn't considered um, in order to build the spine of, spine of the continent, which is a little bit to the, between the West and the Midwest. Um, unfortunately, the Atlantic Wildway has gotten less attention simply because it's quite difficult. The East is very developed, uh, but there is a strong base for conservation work starting with Alabama's wild areas and her own Appalachian mountains and forests, so if you would like to get involved, both I and the Wildlands Network website have resources for you. I'll leave, with, I'll leave you with a quote by Edward Abbey, a cantankerous conservationist who essentially invented radical environmentalism and contributed heavily to uh, the major eco-radical organization Earth First. Abby spoke passionately about the need for wilderness, for a healthy spirit, a healthy nation, and a healthy biosphere. And he also spoke poignantly on the need for wildness, the spirit of wilderness, and something we all experience in our everyday lives. Those little plants breaking through the cracks in the concrete remind us that nature isn't gone, it's just being covered up and ignored, and it's up to us to break the pavement up uh, and start appreciating that beautiful world we've been hiding for so long. If you would like to know more about rewilding, the science behind it, and the organizations putting it into practice, uh, check out these books and articles, and be sure to visit the Wildlands Network website at www.wildlandsnetwork.org.